Yay, it's working. Sound check done. Do you like the intro music, by the way? I think it's quite cool. You can't copy strike me for that one, can you? Hey? Try it, Twitch. Just try it. Okay, we're streaming. What have we got? Um, quickly, quickly. Uh, open GL Foundation code. Press tab. Thank you. Um, dependencies. Develop a system for handling 3D that can be used by any application or game. Fine. Yeah, that's fine. That's what we're doing this week. Sounds good. We're going to have to um, develop a system. Okay. Well, we already know a good system, don't we? We're not going to be using it because it's not in the dependencies. Um, we're using... We don't really have to use C++. It's just that's what the code is in. We could use any language. The language is irrelevant. That can be replaced. GLFW3 is cross-platform. I'm GUI is cross-platform. SPD log is cross-platform. Check, check and check. QT is cross-platform. We're not using it, but we can use its system and improve on it <laughs> yeah how's about that for a for a smack in the teeth for QT interesting where's my coffee it's all the way over the other side of the desk now if you're wondering why it's all the way over the other side of the desk it's because uh, this morning that happened there is a stand here now which is fixed to this pull out drawer this is the main computer keyboard. This is the Linux box keyboard. This is now on a boom arm out to my left. Uh, this will stop me, hopefully, from using the wrong keyboard. The mice have all been transferred up over on the right-hand side here on a part of the top shelf which comes out because uh, this is, like, shaped. As you can see, it's, like, rounded, shaped. It goes in, comes back out, and you get the idea. There's also another monitor on the right hand side uh, plugged into a small um, AMD desktop, literally a little flat box that goes on your desk, um, with a monitor for Twitch and the Twitch chat, which is off to my right here. There is obviously the pen tablet, there's the sound and volume, there's the noises that you hear all the way through the stream, obviously on the left hand side. I have another boom arm here at the back. This will be used for something, a, a product called Remarkable 2, I think. And that will then be able to swing in at the top as a notepad. Um, it's for taking notes, and as you see, I have to take a lot of notes. It's one of the disadvantages of being me. Right, I'm streaming, so confirm. Uh, people can join me in this one. If I'm private streaming, I will be in on air. That is a private place where you can't disturb me. But whilst I'm streaming here, you can join me if you wish to. Perfectly up to you. We do have viewers joining us, so welcome to you viewers. My name's Blades. We do have this thing here. Invite people. How would I invite people? Copy. I can copy it there, can't I? I can pop it into Twitch here, can't I? Don't be shy. I don't bite twice mess me about and you will want to be shy very quickly there you go so anybody can join this is free um, this is active whilst I am not streaming 
and you will find me usually languishing languishing around in general if you want to just sit in there and listen to music you can um there's a bot you, you put your, your fred bot i'm using playing music and it has a semicolon semicolon help in that channel if you want to go and listen to music lovely your choice it's all there i don't i'm not doing anything flashy this is a club um it's designed for the exchange of ideas and information now i know it's a little bit one-sided but mainly i talk but you are allowed to join in you are allowed to use chat the discord um and basically do whatever you want as long as it's not upsetting anybody else that is right there is a problem with this that should have been in inverted commas that's optional because of the system that we're going to use does not depend upon OpenGL. it just happens to be the code that i've slotted in to that slot um the foundation code will not change no matter whether you use OpenGL, um vulcan directx whatever the system will not change no matter what you use c plus plus go uh javascript java god knows what uh python <laughs> god help you the <clears throat> system won't change the this is irrelevant again that's interchangeable the parts that aren't interchangeable are these because they are all cross-platform and i didn't add gln so these are all cross-platform i always forget to add gln because in qt you get it automatically it's part of the thing so everything's c plus plus is cross-platform c plus c is cross-platform um all of these are cross-platform you should have no problems with this the code foundation that we are going to start with is windows oh sigh so that will have to change we need to look at how this system is going to work and it's going to be as qt so let's start designing a system shall we now i've got keyboards and stuff it's going to be dead easy yay um so initial design system initial design okay I won't actually be doing much coding, but on the other hand, I will be going through and explaining all the code because I've already written it. I'm not going to write it again for you because my typing is rubbish. System initial. I just distracted myself. Whoops. Hello, Poppy. so what i want is um using qt uh, event system driven definitely 100 percent event driven which means we do not need to worry about quite a lot of things um there is another problem yeah um core Uh, separate uh, by interface to back end which means you can write different back ends for it i.e. OpenGL, Vulkan, DirectX, whatever you want. The interface stays the same. You can swap, uh, hot swap. Um, let's let's put that in. 
i.e. hot swap um, GFX SDK. Uh, that is a graphics service development kit. OpenGL is that sort of thing. We're going to use GLAD for it um, to access the functions in the drivers. And that's, uh, you could put Vulkan in, you can put whatever you want in, I don't really care. But I was asked specifically for OpenGL, and that's what we're going to do. This has been requested. Um, this is not my choice to do this. And I hope it's of interest to the people who requested it, and also of interest to you. All of you. There may be some things in here that are wrong. Feel free to correct me. Feel free to come up with a better system that I come up with and let me know. I am more than interested in that. It would be great if you can. But we'll start with um, what I know. And I think we can build from there. So it's we're going to build this as um, initially. Oh God, initially build as a static library. Why not? which can then be included in any project you wish. Let's switch to the machine whilst we're here. Um, and we will create an application once we can build our library. We'll write a small application uh, to show how we can use that. Now, within the code, I have left myself some notes, thank God. Otherwise, we'd be lost for hours and hours whilst I tried to work out what the hell I'd written like for in the past four years. I have no idea what I've written, by the way. We're going to find out, though. And I'm going to help you look at the code, understand the code, and... If this helps you learn to program, fair enough. If you want me to change um, language because you're of the belief that learning to program requires a language, fair enough. I'll do that. I don't care. I don't care what language I'm writing something in. I'm just, I don't program like that. Uh, I'm a systems analyst, I design a system, the program drops out the system, the language I use, I don't give it in goes. So it's your choices all the way round. It's currently in C++ code. Uh, we do have to add... Uh, no, we don't add a C file at all. That's what I was thinking yesterday. I thought I had a file missing and then I realized afterwards that I was wrong. I don't have a file missing. The file doesn't go in the in the library. It goes in your application. Right, that's okay. People may disagree with that and place it into the library. Those choices are all yours. Now, event driven. This will help people understand QT and how QT is event driven, which is a bonus if any of you are using QT because it is pretty damned hard to understand at first. It's got a sharp learning curve, I think. It took me about a year. I think with QT on and off, not a year solid. I mean on and off, a day here, a day there. Probably accounting for a week to a month, maybe, max. 
a week to, to three weeks, I think, um, to get comfortable with QT and understand what the hell it was doing. Working things out in QT is a little bit more difficult, but once you've actually programmed like QT using using that software as a, a library later on becomes a lot more easier and a lot more understandable. C++, do you want me to teach C++? Really? Do we have to do that? Um, I will, if it's requested. If you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, say so. And I will alter to first principles. And I will explain from first principles, which means I will teach ish the language as we go. This is not a teaching channel. Um, this is a club. I don't expect everybody to know how to program. That looks nice. That looks pretty now. <laughs> An artistic build. I don't expect anything. I have no assumptions. Um, I have no opinions about the things that we are using for this system because it doesn't matter to me. I will only present facts. There we go. I've been asked to do this, so let's do it. Let's design ourselves a system. <laughs> Um, how can we do this that's going to be an easy way of looking at it? Should we go through it in order? We could. But that would mean using two machines and a blackboard. Hmm. Not good. We might not use a second machine then. <laughs> Alright. Um, where can we go for this? We can check. Let's get some files. Yeah, I've got my phone plugged in because I put that picture up. I'm also charging my phone. <laughs> Whoops. <clears throat> uh, Twitch. Oh, that's not too bad then. Show more options. Git bash. Here. There we go. Let's get bash. We're in Twitch. Looks good. Let's get the code. Not hard to do. It will be on GitHub. Um, at here. You'll find it at FraserBlade Sharp forward slash OpenGL Foundation Code. Um, we are on a master branch. There's no other branches. This is just raw code which I threw together over the weekend. Um, as you can see, it updated 21 hours ago. And the code's all in, well, a lot of the code is here. So it's glfw3, I'm GUI, SPD log, um, or speed logger, um, glm. These these are raw code files which should be improved upon and are not considered final versions. You can choose any development environment to hold the files, then compile it using the tools of that environment. So basically I've left it up to you. There is no file for automatically compiling this because currently this is not generic code, this is Windows code. As I can show you in a minute. So the code, um, HTTP, yeah, okay, we'll take you, we'll take that copied, right, thank you. Oh, whilst we're here, can we just pop over and manage videos? Oh, it's done it again. Why two? That's yesterday's Sunday's talk. Okay. I'm glad I checked it now. So I've got to go back and sort that out. 
In here, I can just put git clone uh, whatever. Uh, take the git off the end, don't we? Or do we need it? I don't know. Ah, there you go. Yeah, we're up, we're running. Fantastic. Um, let's just type in uh, CD open GL uh, foundation. Uh, just tab. Does it for you? We're on the master branch. And do we have code installed? Uh, yes, I trust. Thank you. Here we go. We have an editor, a simple editor called VS Code. If you want a copy of that, just download it from the VS Code, Microsoft VS Code uh, download page. If you are on Manjaro, which the other machine is, you will have to download it from the AUR, not from the normal distro. The normal distro one isn't that good. Right, we're all done. There, get out, get, get, go, go away. All right, we've got all the files now. Here we go. And the reason why I say that this is Windows code is because if we look in core, and we're about to talk about this, so we'll put it up on screen, you will see there is this if def. If you are currently on Linux, actually, it's all greyed out. So that has that definition isn't there. That if if I put in uh, hash define, watch what happens. Uh, paste, uh, enter. There you go. Everything suddenly gets squiggly. It exists. There you go, switches it all off. So this is just switching code on and off by whether or not we have defined that we are going to be using platform windows or not. This will probably be done, knowing me, in a common file. There you go. Hash define, amber platform windows. Oh, and amber debug. It then does an if. It's doing a little bit some pieces just to enable things like, that, like asserts and stuff. This is just protecting the code so that it doesn't compile on Linux. And it certainly won't compile here because we don't have any code to compile. These don't exist. Yeah, none of this exists. That's good. I don't want any of it to exist. I'm not interested in that. We'll do that on the Linux side. There's no dependencies here. Source. There's platform. Yeah, the, the dependencies isn't here. There should be uh, an extra. What you would do is basically go to source. Um, where are where would we be using dependencies? Let's find out where we put it. Hmm, that's a bit dodgy. is not a good place to look then. GLFW is. Window. Okay, we're not giving ourselves uh, a good 
leg up here, are we? Oh, open GL self-contained with glad. Yep. Um, we would have events. Events are GLFW driven. Common. Okay. All right, I'm not giving myself very, very, very many hints within this. A bit annoying. This code is uh, originally from https github.com uh, avengers at amberskies.git, which I own. Uh, that's the GitHub that I worked on whilst at Amberskies. It is my work. Amber Skies has been wrapped up and disbanded as of the 1st of January of this year, so I'm now allowed to release this as public code under my own name or my own alias. So somebody somewhere is including this stuff. And this is the problem with C++, isn't it? Who the hell's including this stuff? Hmm. Control click, isn't it? <laughs> so I'll go back to the original. And what am I looking for? Um, I'm looking for a solution. Wait a minute, hold on a minute. This might actually have the original in. Source, 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 uh, Amber Skies. Yeah, dependencies were out were beside the source. Okay, that's all, that's all I needed to know. All right, so we'll do that. We'll put that back. So somewhere for you to place your dependencies. will be in assets source under foundation lib here there new folder it's one that I've deleted because I was cleaning it all up for t this week depend and there you go we've got that back now there's nothing in there obviously because I don't really want any right now Um, uh, placed that's past tense do not write your things in past tense there's no changes it's just a uh, structure isn't it damn it doesn't matter it will matter though Turn that keyboard around, can't I? I'm going to have to get used to this. Oh, right, I see. I have no idea how this works. Um... Oh, I, yeah, right, swivel, swivel, yeah, swivel you two, whoops. There we go. I'll just put that there for a sec. Uh, 
other locations, projects, Twitch, Open GL Foundation, Foundation, and it goes here. Oh, have, have I put some in? Are these in? Okay. They shouldn't be. Why did they not stay on? Thank you. Right, that's that sorted, so we're clean. We're all in the right place. Good. We're all on the same page now. <coughs> Initially build as a static lib. What else have we got here now? Right, let's design the system. Mm, yeah. Right, it all starts with the application that you want to write. So we have um, your application. We'll start that. It doesn't really matter where I start it, does it? Your Game. It's a games club. We're not doing applications. Game. How the static library will work is as follows. So what we do is we put a dotted line across here. For the static library. That's the boundary. Don't care what you call the static library either. You can call it anything you want. And this will have an entry point. A file called entry point. Okay. All right, so we've got our entry point. Let's pop you here. Lovely. We're okay so far. We understand that we have a game. We have a static library. We have an entry point. That entry point must give an application. So we're going to put an application here. and also a, a layer system which we're going to talk about so that's the next part of the puzzle and of course then we have our events okay looking good so far application layers events um, after that we have backend do we need anything else mmm Uh, so what did we actually call this in the code? Oh, what am I doing? I don't need to do that. Did I shut it? Ooh. Hey. VS Code, where are you? Come back. All's forgiven. Well, not all's forgiven. 
you have installed the remote WSL extension but have not used it yet. That's right, because my um, server switched off. What did we call it in here? Platform. that part to it and now we get to the interesting part uh, where we have what did I call it interface where does the interface go from that corner the interface is a separate system So we've got our application, we've got our layers, we've got our events, and we've got our platform. Is there anything I'm missing? Did I do that correctly? Let's pop it all on screen and find out. That's your system. It's simple. Uh, layers is critical to this system um, without the layers idea which we have to talk about probably the most uh, because Qt doesn't have it Qt doesn't have the layers bit so in Qt you've got your entry point your application your events and your platform we are slotting in layers on the side of application as well uh, we are adding that as, as an extra event system which is fine I think we're okay there because if I remember rightly this gives back the window on this side. I think I've done them on the wrong sides, but I don't care because to there. So we've got our window, our graphics window, or whatever you want to call it. And layers feeds back the events into here. Right, that's okay. And that's why it's important. If you think that your application is controlling the events, it is. But it is the layers uh, that we are going to be using to create our game. And the application has to hook, these two have to hook together uh, to create the system within which we can control the game. The main game loop is in here using this. This gives us access to the main game loop within inside the application. Qt does not give you that. You have to set up an event system external of the application whereas this gives you uh, access inside the application to automate those events so you don't have to set your events up that's what layers is about
It's also about something else that's very critical about games. Alright, we are there. Now, if I remember rightly, are we supposed to go down on the left and up on the right, or down on the right and up on the left? I don't care. Call me out on it, I don't give a toss. As long as it makes sense and I put the arrows on, we are fine. So we'll put some extra arrows in just to make sure that people do realise I've probably done it the wrong way round. Ah, lovely. Okay, so that's a sketch drawing of our system. Um, how it works is a pretty simple idea. It's not a complicated one. It works on the fundamental idea that you create a layer to control part of your program, say the graphics, or maybe items, or a layer designed for input, or an overlay for UI. These should be filled in. But it's irrelevant. Um, so you can have multi many, 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 many layers. You can have a layer that's just specifically designed to be an editor. You can have a layer doing anything you want, and you can switch to that layer at any time you want on an event happening within your program. This gives you full control of your program. And it doesn't matter about the machine that's running it. The machine that's running it is irrelevant. There we go, that looks a bit better now. We've nearly got a pretty drawing. There we go. I nearly got that right. It needs to be a bit straighter, but hey ho. A bit more pointy here to look better. There we go. All right, altered, altered, altered. Yeah, we're okay. Arrows mean arrows, uh, lines mean lines. Uh, this line isn't very good as it hooks into here and here we should really make that a double line as it's a pipe Yeah, that's that done. Uh, we want to show that there is a link. Here and here. Good. So there is a link to the interface from both application and layers. Uh, they are integrated together. Right, so what you're looking at is a diagram of layers. The first layer being the entry point, the top layer. Uh, yes, there is another layer which I haven't mentioned, of course. And that will be the last layer. 
the operating system which we don't care about because we're not going to program it there we go so we can see it all lovely we now have a system um, very basically drawn uh, a very primitive idea of a system but it has an anchor point it has a couple of anchor points here firstly there's an entry point that's not optional the application is not optional the layers well they're pretty much optional you don't have to have them but you're going to find out that you do really want them the interface is just an interface how you program that is really up to how it goes along uh, the there is an event layer which is separate to the application and the layers or is it and there's a platform layer which is completely independent and can contain any platform you wish uh, the window that is returned from the platform layer to the application is probably going to be operating system specific we're going to use GLFW3 at this point in time so it's just going to be whatever a GLFW window is for us I think that's the simplest I can put the system without it going completely mentally over everybody's head so we need to talk about layers what are layers I've done this talk before have I done it on this channel on uh, the games club and how do layers work <laughs> because it, this is the reason why we want to program it we are going to have an event system given to us which we can access and control in any way shape or form we wish uh, layers is a very good way of doing it what happens when you program your game is you can set up layers each layer can be do a specific job and can be independent or connected to any other layer this means that the whole of your game becomes modular you can program one part of your game as a module and slot it in if it's not good or if it isn't doing what you want it to you can rewrite that module and slot it in you can keep the old module as it may be better used somewhere else you can create a code base over a number of years of modules you can then create games in a very very short time by selecting the modules you wish to use and just slotting them together if a module doesn't do exactly what you want alter it and save it for future use this style of programming is how the games industry works it's why you will see something like I think one of the the best descriptions for this and actually we're going to give a shout out in a minute to this if I can find it on the internet I'm going to I'll pop it into uh, chat a link if I can um, something famous Fallout the Fallout series Fallout 1 Fallout 2 Fallout 3 great mm, discount Fallout 3 great games uh, Fallout Vegas um, Fallout 4 
I think we've got. I don't know where we're up to now, but hell, I don't follow these things. Unbelievably great system. It took them a long time to develop Fallout 1. It didn't take them a long time to develop Fallout 2. Did they reuse code? Yes, of course they did. They'd be stupid not to. They had a good system. In Fallout 3, they messed up and redid the code. Well, you can't have everything. Nobody likes Fallout 3. It was crap. Fallout 4, they brought the code back. And stopped trying to be clever. And that's what this system is about. You generate code on a three-pass system. Pass one is your basic code. That's the code that we actually have on disk right now here. This is pass one code here. It's garbage. It's all just garbage. And then you clean it up uh, into pass two code, which is useful and can produce things that look rather nice like this. Can you see this? Hold on a minute. Control maybe? Is it plus? It is. Uh, plus again? Oh, okay. Lovely. Cool. I remembered something. Hey everybody, I've remembered something for the first time in this series. <laughs> I remembered how to do it. So you start getting code that is very, very clean. And you might think that this has been through a pass two. It hasn't. This is my pass one. Well, that's clean code for pass one, isn't it? That's just me. It's the way I am. I don't like writing rubbish. I'm not like 90% of programmers because I'm not a programmer. So I don't have to write rubbish. I can actually write the real code. Big difference. <clears throat> yeah, GLM. Okay. So you'll look in something like core and you'll look at application.cpp and you'll think, this is clean. No, it's not. It's bloody well not. But this code is rather okay. We've got this. Bloody, that shouldn't be there. That's not gold stand, that's not pass two. That's what gives it away. This is your run for your application. And yes, it's here. Pass one code. Yeah, pass one code, it's still in here. This isn't pass two. But look how clean the code is, even though it's a pass one. Each function delivers exactly what it needs to deliver. There you go. Close an application. Running equals false. That's a difficult function to write, isn't it? But I wonder how many developers screwed that up. It must be the easiest function in the world to write. It isn't. Because it's not the first function you write. And that's important about the way you code. If you want to learn how to program, or I, I'm not going to call it programming anymore. If you want to learn how to code, this will make you think. At what point was this function written in this file? 
Now if you go back through the GitHub uh, on Avengers, which you can do, um, you just control click on there. If you go back through that and look at the history of this file, it was the one of the last things to be set up. There's our event system with a dispatcher. Dispatching it to wherever we want. So as an event is generated, we can capture it. Uh, we can create a dispatcher and then dispatch the event to anywhere we wish. Nice. So we are tying up to the dispatcher these. And this is our layers. Each layer we go through each time and we take our E, which shouldn't it should say event. It shouldn't be E at all. We take our event and we send it on. We send it through to the on event of each layer. And if you have a look in layer, there's nothing there. Because layer on event is virtual and is expected to be created if the user wants events in that layer, they can create that and it will accept events. Neat. So obviously this is inherited from. Let's have a look at a, a source. So how it works is right down at the bottom, the very last thing that happens is in main. Why have I got that there? It shouldn't be there. That's wrong. Interestingly wrong, but it's wrong. Uh, that shouldn't be like that. That's a bad example. Let's find a good example. It's just the same. Oh crap. It's not here. Oh dear. Where's my reference code? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's have a look at some reference code, see if we've got it in here. Ah, we do. <laughs> Packages come from, oh right, PCH, wow. VCX project, that, that tells me where I was. I was in something called a VS Microsoft Community Visual Studio garbagey thingy. Yeah, I remember that. Okay, that's a test case. That's a test system. Did I change it because I didn't like the way it was going in? I'll keep pressed, yep. Yeah. Core layer. Right, so that's your core layer. There you go. Um 
how do we make this one bigger? Control. Mm hmm. Close. No. Alt. Shift. Control. Alt. Plus. No. God knows. Let's make this bigger. And get rid of that for a second. Ba ba da boom, ba boom, ba boom. Here we go. There we go, we can see now. The entry point. This is the entry point that I'm talking about. There is no main. Main is held within the library. So you have to hash include Amber Sky, oh, in this case, Amber Sky's core main entry point. You then create um, an application from that entry point. That will create a sand rogue function here, a class, sand rogue, return a new sand rogue. This class, it looks very disjointed because it is, it's supposed to be, um, will push a layer, the core layer, in this case, for, the t for this application, and that's all it's doing doesn't need to do anything else. We include core and if you have a look at core you will find it's a another layer. Well it is a full layer uh, doing things. This is an interesting way of starting an application and this is the way you should start an application. Sorry a game. Damn I'm calling it application again. A game is not an application. A game is generated for fun. If it is not fun, it becomes an application. If it doesn't actually apply itself, it becomes a piece of art. Those are the definitions. So that's how it works. Now you're thinking, hold on a minute, what have you just done? Well, we've just created an application using main entry point. So where's main? Well, it's there. It says it, main. In C++ and C, Java, and derived languages, from C and C++, you need a main entry point. This is so that the computer knows where to start your program. Where does the program start? And it's a special function called main. And you need it. And you will find it here. Okay, don't follow it then. Are you not going to let me do this? No, you know, okay. Oh, it's because it's not loaded up here. Hmm. So where is it? Amber Skies. Uh, core. Source. Amber Skies. Core. Main entry point. It's only a header file. That's the trick to this one, actually. We'll pop you up in here as well. Thank you. Cheers. So here you will find the good old... You see how it's all been greyed out because of this stupid if-def? Here you will find int main. 
Int main will um, initialize the logger, SPD log. It will print a hello, welcome to Ambus guys. Um, it will then create the application. It will then run the application. Once the application has been told it's going to terminate, it will then delete the application and exit. That's how Qt does it. The application, sorry, Qt doesn't do it that way, sorry. The application is how Qt does it. And if you go through the application, it will show you then how it joins everything up within the event system. Because the application is your initial central focal point for the program. It is the application which will run and it is the application which will send out the events to every other part of your program. It will also run every other part of your program, each layer in turn. So you have to have your layers in a certain order maybe. Good, good to know, good to know. How to use layers. Hmm. So yeah, your layers are run, well you run your layers in a certain order and it's up to you which order you run them in or which order you create your layers uh, will determine the order in which they run. The first layer that you create will be run first unless you do a special layer called a debug layer and that will always be run first. Uh, that is programmed in. Okay, so we're understanding now that this main entry point is actually int main. It's the thing that we usually get given by our IDE, our Qt creator. We normally get given this, but in this instance we don't want it. It's been written for us, but inside of a, sta a static library. That in itself is interesting. It shifts the whole paradigm of how to program. You no longer have to worry about your main program and your application. All you have to worry about is which layer gets run first. Let's have a look at a typical layer, a core layer. Don't know why I keep shutting this one, doesn't really matter. Yeah, gone. We'll have a look at it. A core layer would look something like the header file. You'd have your virtual voids as you are going to be inheriting from the layer itself. You can call it anything you wish. This time I've just typed in core layer. Um, we are going to have a scene, a main scene. Uh, that means basically a window. Well, we've, enc we've encountered scenes before, haven't we? And scene programming. You will... I just hadn't got to the layers stage last week. We were messing around with Vulcan instead. Um, so we have our constructor for our core layer. Um, we have our destructor, which we're just saying, hey, use the default, we don't care. And then we've got a couple of um, on attach, on detach, and on update using delta time. Nice, nice touch. We've actually got delta time as well. Um, there is a, an on I'm GUI render override for debug. There's on event, on key pressed, on mouse button. Pressed and new scene. So 
So all of the overrides have been pre-programmed and will be controlled by the application, which we have nothing to do with at all uh, in our game. That's an, a, going to be an application engine, event engine running in the background, uh, pre-designed for us. And when we go and have a quick look at um, core CPP, you'll see that we open up with a layer, we give it a name, so we can access it by name if we wish. That's usually a debug name, it's not really required. Main scene is now a new amber scene, which means we've got a window. That gives us our window. On attach, in other words, when this is constructed and attached to the system, we're going to set the clear color for the window. On detach, we delete the scene. On update, we take the main scene and we say on update with the time that it's taken since the last update. That delta time means the amount of time between updates. Uh, again, if debug, we've got a little GUI coming up giving us information. On event, sends the event through to the main scene. On key press, on mouse button press, nothing done. On new scene, nothing done. So on new scene, we would probably say, load these models, initialize this, do that, do the other. You get the idea. That's where our program goes. Have I got a program in here somewhere? Oh, that's the testing system. I have. There's a program here. So we've got a test 2D layer. Let's have a look at that. So to give you an idea, on attach, uh, we initialize the renderer. That will choose our back end. Currently OpenGL because we haven't given any options. You should give it options and be able to type in those brackets which back end you wish. Get you out of the way, mouse. So that's missing. You should be able to initialize OpenGL, initialize Vulkan. Inside there should be something to tell our system what to initialize. Um, usually that's done in SDL2 and GLFW and things like that using um, an enumeration or a bit field or something. Initialize the background, initialize the first quad. We're using quads so as what squares. Uh, we've got a translation to place it. Um, so we're initializing quite a lot here on attach. This is our initializer. Just setting up things. Initialize the test texture. Initialize the materials. I've got materials. Oh, it's a material component. We've got an ECS. There you go. Um, we've got a render a 2D shutdown. Delete um, main scene. On update, we are going to entity rotation system. Rotate the quads anti-clockwise for OpenGL, blah, 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 blah. Entity rotation system. Well, wherever that function is, good luck to it. We update the main scene, which will obviously render it using whatever renderer you've initialized. Uh, we have a debug here for on I'm GUI, which will give you various information 
about what, what's going on. On event E, we have the main scene taken in an event. Uh, we have the event di dispatcher going to the key pressed and mouse buttons, so we can use them. That helps. This is the rotation system that was thrown together. We're just revolving around the Z axis, is that true? Yes, it is. So we're just going, we've got a square and it's going counterclockwise, so it's going that way round and it's just lazily going round at 60 frames per second. I know it's going round at 60 frames per second because we are using delta time. So the delta time is being used to control the frames per second. Okay, done. I think that's a general overview. I might stay on this side actually. I think we've covered everything that we should cover. Is there. We can't load the pro. We, there is nothing to load, it's just code got nothing to load at this point it's not a project so we would have to turn it into a project first of all that's possibly the first thing we should do is create ourselves a project how do we do that so I've given you the code and I said it's Windows code I'm on Linux how do I create a project? There's, there's no project. I said it. You can put it into any IDE. I'll, I'll, we'll put it into Qt Creator. I don't give a ding. Else. I don't care what IDE I use. Um, but I would prefer not to be using uh, Microsoft whatever. We could use Visual Code, VS Code. But that's not an IDE, that's just a text editor, a glorified text editor. But it's very good. It's probably the best thing that Microsoft did. But they're now messing it up completely. Which is their... Um, prerogative. Right, so we need to... I've chosen an IDE. I'm going to use Qt Creator. It's available on all systems. It's available on Mac. It's available on Windows. Um, it's simple. And as far as I'm concerned, it's effective. It's effective. So how are we going to use this? Um, let's not use that because it's white. Let's use this because it isn't white. Yeah, thank you. Ah, oh, docs. Uh, so I can going over to doc.qt.io forward slash qt6 forward slash index.html. I'm then going to search for QMake. I think I'm going to search for it, but I'm on the wrong keyboard. Right, this is where we get the keyboards in. Oh, wow. And it works. Oh, oh. And there's a manual. Here it is. QMake. It's a language. It's CMake, but QT's version of CMake. And it does interact and use CMake as the background base. You, the easiest way to install QMake is to download Qt Creator or Qt. And it'll install it for you on whatever system you're on. Uh, there is a Qt Community Edition which is free. If you do write commercial software, don't use that. They will have you for it. I'm sorry, Poppy. You're going to have to bow your head a little bit here. I don't know how this is going to work with the cat sat there. Okay, we can now slide the keyboard across. So that it is in front of me. OK, 
Okay, I can try and set this keyboard up. This is the first time I'm going to try and use it. I'm not overly happy about the holder for the keyboard that I'm using. I think I might change that. I've got, I've got multiple holders to try out. Um, we have our mouse here. If we get really, yep, that's working nicely. So QMate, what can it do? This is basically the language that's inside of QMake. Scopes. Oh, right, okay, it's got scopes. Good. Uh, if. It's got if. Doesn't really need much else, does it? It's, it's a very simplified and easy to use CMake. It's even got variables. Replace. Test functions. Hmm. Platform notes and advanced usage. I'm just going to go back one. Oh, I like that. That's helpful for the Max. Libs. How to add lib libraries, um, what, how to set up your templates. Creating and moving Xcode projects, you gem. Well done. Windows. Creating Visual Studio project files. Yeah. QMate will do that for you. That's cool. Running QMake. Let's go back to that one. Command syntax. QMake mode options files. Ah, right. We're in the right place now. QMake supports two different modes of operation. In the default mode, QMake uses the information in a project file, a dot pro file, to generate a make file and uses CMake, believe it or not. But it is also possible to use QMake to generate the project file. Oh, that's nice. If you want to explicitly set the mode, you must specify it before all other options. The mode can be either of the following two values, make file or project file. If you don't specify, it'll do make file. So we can have backslash project. Do we need any options on this? Help O D. Debug information. No. Um, T. Template variables. Okay. Prefixing. No. The level of warning information can be fine tuned to help you find problems in your project file. Okay. Whatever. Uh, it then goes into the make file part of it. Nice. Project mode options. We can have minus R will look through supplied directories recursively. That's nice. So we're going to use that. So we want QMake project minus R dot for the current directory. No PWD. QMake will not look in your current di working directory for source code. It will only use the specified files. Okay, we don't want that. We just want minus R. Right. So we know what we're doing. Rather easy to use, don't you think? Don't you think that's a little bit too simple? I'll just put it there. Then. Okay, I've got a lot of noise on my right hand side and it sounds like it's inside the house. If you'll just please excuse me, I'll just go and investigate.
awesome. Somebody cleaning windows halfway down the street, and it sounds to me as if it's in my side of my house. That is typical. Okay. So we don't have a QT project. Let's go find one. Mm -hmm. Can we switch that off now? I was only checking things. Um, here we go. So the project we want to make is not Sandbox. Sandbox we're just not going to be using right now. Uh, so it's foundation, it's a library. We will open in a terminal here. There we go. Okay, that's working nicely. Um, our search results moved. <laughs> Never mind, I think I remember it. Uh, do I? QMake. <laughs> there we go. QMake project, and I said minus R dot slash. Is that correct? Or is it just dot? I think it's just dot. Go ahead and do it, whatever. Uh, LS. We now have foundation lib dot pro. Oh. Do we? Well, that's a project. Projects, Twitch. Foundation Lib Pro. Desktop QT 6.2.3 GCC 64-bit. Ah, oh, configure it then. Go ahead, do your stuff. It's going to give us some interesting things, but don't worry about it. Here we go. It's in Origin Master, as we already knew. We have headers, source. We've got Amber Skies platform. Um, yeah, it's picked, it seems. We've got sources. Oh, yeah, we've got headers and source. Oh, I hate that system. Hey ho. So it seems to have picked up on everything. Let's have a look. It's in our profile. This is this is the file it's created for us. Automatically generated by QMake 3.1, Monday, April the 4th, 1447 at 58. As you can see, it's 4th of April, 1449. Two seconds later. The include path. Hmm, that's um, interesting. Template app. Ooh, that's going to go down badly, isn't it? All right. Um, it gives you some interesting things about QT, which we've not asked for. Bye. So our headers, it's picked up that we have all of these headers available to us. And it's under Amber Skies. Interesting. So these are all our headers. These are all of our CPP files. So this is our sources for our CPP files. It's got all of those. And that's it. That's all it's given us. To me, that sounds fine. That's all I wanted. That's how simple it, the system is. You could have written this yourself. But it writes it for you automatically. So that's stage one. We're on Linux. This code should not work. Control S. Thank you. This code should not work. We're going to leave that up as we are now going to go and find out what a profile should look like. So we'll go to Rana. Uh, we can look 
at midnight, which is a static library that we were working on last week. And we can open this in the text editor. And we're going to notice a few things different. And I think that's the important thing. The important thing here is that I have already created a static library in Qt. So I already have uh, a profile made under a separate um, project. And I can now compare them. And this will allow me to say, ah, hold on a minute, look at this at the top. Template. Oh, lib. We can do that. Config. All right. Let's put in some config. Hmm. Why has he done that? How do we do this config then? Fair enough. Config. Um, whatever configuration it's got, we are going to add to it the following. We are going to add static lib. Uh, we can add C17. We can add C plus plus seventeen. It'll tell us down here if we mess up, don't worry. When you save it out, it'll automatically do that and scan. It'll scan through and make sure we're okay. The errors will come up everywhere if we get it wrong, don't worry. Uh don't need any of that. Sources and headers. Okay. Include path. We might need that. Nope. We do have dist files for assets. I don't know if we have any. Uh, yeah, we do. We don't need to type that in. All we need to do is add existing directory assets. OK. There we go. Other files will now come up. And our profile should have been modified. Yeah, distribution files, assets. So we've got a couple of shaders. That's nice. We've got a flat color and we've got a texture one. Did we put any shadowing on this? No. So that's been added. Anything else we might need that we haven't done? Oh, yeah. <laughs> How's about all of those uh, things called um, libraries, <laughs> like GLFW3 and stuff? Dependencies, that was it. What about all those dependencies? We've got our Foundation Pro. Will it work? No, it won't work at this point. There's no point in me even running it. I can tell you that straight off. Because we haven't got um, any libraries. Hmm. How can we add libraries? On uh, a system called Windows, uh, you would have to <coughs> download the library. You can build it or you can download the binaries. You can place them somewhere and you go to Foundation Lib here. You right click on it and you just add library external next library tap type you'd be on windows good luck 
library file, you would browse to wherever you put it and your include path would be a browse to wherever the include files were. They can be anywhere on your system and you can add it for Windows and as a, it depends where they've put the library file if you're down, downloading the binaries um, and you may have a D suffix on the end for debug so you've got all the control there that's if you're on Windows on Linux ooh, let's add oh door I knew that was going to happen with a window cleaner be right back windows are clean oh, sorry about that at least you now know it's live so we've got all of this information that we've got coming up now in this profile um, if we run it it's gonna say yikes how am I supposed to compile all of this stuff you have put in here let's just check that we've got things available to us um, for Windows you have to go probably to GitHub or to the web pages of everything that you want. Not my problem. GLFW3. <laughs> Thank you. Um, direct. 
de derelict. A dynamic binding to the GLFW3 library. All right, let's just take GLFW. Um, what do we got here? We've got documentation. We've got the Git repository. Git version. That's AUR. I don't want AUR. Thank you. I want the official repositories, please. Wayland. No, thank you. I switched it off. GLFW X11, a free open source portable framework for graphical application development. X11. <gasps> Look, there's Python. Look, people. This 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 that useless language version. Oh you lucky 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 people. I'm having this one. I don't care what you want. Let's see I don't know what to put here. Does that work? Um apply. Okay. Do I need OpenGL? Mm, that's not going to do well, is it? OpenGL. Man pages, open glad, open glide. I don't want any of that. Um, Mesa tools, M E A S A. Make sure I've got Mesa. Open source implementation of the OpenGL specification. We've downloaded, we've got the demos, we've got the VDPAU drivers. Yay! Remember, I've got no drivers in, on Linux. I haven't installed any drivers, even though that we are using a, a GPU. I do it on purpose uh, for programming. We've got some utilities. Hmm. Well, we haven't got some utilities. What's this? Oh, OpenGL, OpenGL ES, Vulkan, OpenCL, and more. <laughs> Featured APIs, supported drivers. Look at all of these. VDPAU, Ooh, Video Decode and Presentation API for Unix. Uh, streaming video. We should just say that. Why do they have to say it in such a stupid way? Um, that's been released. Documentation getting started. Blah, 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 blah. It doesn't say anything about messy utilities here. I'll just pop over to getting started. Unpacking contents. Demos. Ah, demos. Glut and glue. Ooh. Glut and glue. Go, you guys. And um, do you tell us how to access you? I already know. I think I do anyway. So we're going to need a library. <coughs> um... I should have kept that open, shouldn't I? Probably. Uh, where should we put our libraries? I'm going to put our libraries here. And see, it's going to be a minus L for library. And we will have GL. I would also like 
uh, GLFW. Mm, that might work. Don't quote me on this because I'm just typing in whatever. I wonder if that's going to be in capitals or not. <clears throat> Unix is case sensitive. That doesn't look very nice, does it? Hmm. I don't think it is. I think it's GLFW. Um, what else did we say we wanted? GLM? GLM is header files only, does not need to be a library. It isn't actually a library in the true sense. It is just a bunch of header files. So GLM's okay. Who else should we have? Do we need the include pass for these? I would doubt it. Who else did we say we wanted? I'm GUI. And speed log. Uh, I'm good. Bloat free graphical user interface. SFML. Oh, right. And of course there is the W6. Why is the two? Interesting. We're using GCC64, not the MinGW. That one is for use on Windows. We sh could be could download it through Qt, but we are using GCC64 bit, so we don't need that one. We can take the top one, this one. It's in AUR, AUR, AUR. Okay, go ahead, make my day. I'm GUI. It's in lowercase, so I'm going to be in lowercase. There you go, that's in lowercase, matey. Go ahead and make my day. Okay, that checks through there. Um, so we'll take that. Doesn't look right. It really doesn't look right. Quick check down here on their readme's the pitch, the usage, blah de blah de blah. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Code. Fine. How it works. Just tell me what I'm supposed to include, you prats. Release and change log. Integration. Uh, uh, ba -ba has it told me here as yet uh, what I'm supposed to include as a library? The actual library name. There are C bindings. Yeah, okay. 
gallery. No, nope, they're not going to tell us, are they? So you're not going to tell us what this builds into. I'm guessing it builds into whatever you've titled it then. And it's not built into something called Dear I'm Gooey. No, it's just under, it's, that's it. I'm Gooey. Whatever. Should be on the first line. We haven't even built ours, so I can't even put it on. I don't know what it's going to be built to, because I haven't specified. SPD log. I'll do GLM next. I know GLM exists. There it is. Are you in the repositories? Yes, you are. We already have it. Good. Next. I thought we had. Um, speed log. S P D L R J. There it is. Official repository. Header only. <clears throat> there you go. It says it in it. Header only. We do not need to link against it. So I'm GUI. I'm a bit concerned about GLFW. Don't know if I got that right. We can apply that. And we'll pop speed logger in. Yeah, apply. Pop it on. So on Windows, you have to download all of that. Um, I would stick them in a dependencies directory and then link against each one that you have to. Uh, what I am going to do though is just put header only. Uh, the reason I don't remember what these are called is not because I don't know what they're called. Uh, it's because they change depending on whether you are on Windows, Mac or on Linux. So this dot profile will only work for Linux. But it doesn't have to. Hmm. We could change it. We could. <laughs> but we're not going to. Uh, speed logs done. I think we did everything then. I'm happy that we've probably got everything. What are you downloading? All right. I'm sure that that's going to be a capital I and that's going to be a capital G at the end of the day. But without anything to check it against. Knows. Um, we need target. We've called it foundation lib. Mm hmm. So I've just criticised everybody else for this. Using a uh, build target output of um, whatever I've got. So I'm just taking notes for everybody. You can change the name of it. We could just call it, yeah, it's foundation lib. Of, let's see how it's got capitals in it. Well, I don't really want a foundation. Um, 
on Linux. You would um, build against minus L foundation. That's basically how it's supposed to work. So the, one of the things I want to do there then is just remove um, that lib off the end. So that's my target. Does it need a lib on the end? Hmm. Will it add one? What will it add? It'll just put a dot A. No? Okay. Alright. We'll leave it. We'll go with what they're giving us. We'll not try and be um, a smart ass. I'm just going to put that as a note. I'm just leaving that note in for me. It might help other people. Yeah, depending on what you build. All right, I think I'm okay except for that. I'm really not happy about that. I'm thinking that is a lot better. Hmm. We're about to find out, aren't we, really? Okay, get rid of this now. We've got everything we need. We've got OpenGL, we've got GLFW, and I'm GUI. Headers. Let's start at uh, application.h. Common file not found. That tells me that we do need an include directory. Common is under source. Source is with a capital S. Okay. Do that. Let's watch it go through. So there's something wrong in common. Include windows.h. So what does Linux use? <clears throat> File not found. Well, firstly, we're on Linux, so that is not correct. Okay. Error. Amber supports Windows only. Maybe. If deb amber debug. Hash define amber enable asserts. That's going to be fun. 
So this is our first entry point into programming this is what I call a common file. This will hold all the common bits and pieces that I want. We've got backends. All right, let's get rid of that backends business. Please. That should be coming from I'm GUI. You found that one, but you've not found that one. Wonder why. I'm going internal H STD. Okay. This will be in a standard path. The standard path will be user shared and it's probably in the binary directory, I would think. Downloads, music, pictures, video, and other locations. Let's have a look in. Mm, it's giving us libs here. Oh, user. I would have thought in here because we downloaded them, didn't we? I know there are shortcuts, but I want to see if I can work this out. Hmm. GCC maybe? I wouldn't have thought so. I would have thought it would come under I'm GUI. I'm lib2 and I'm GUI. Alright, so that's what the share is about. Nothing to do with the uh, Let's go try and lib64 it. There's GCC. Ah, oh, this is better. Yeah, let's go with this one then. Uh, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, A. And we've only got in lib2. Loaders and filters. Is it coming under deer? I'm gooey deer. No. So 
So if it's not in the top part, it might be in the bottom part. Oh my god, how much this rubbish is there? Ah, uh, ba do ba do ba do ba do At least we'll find out, hopefully, what it's called now. There's ice. Bye bye. Image. What's this? I think it's not here. Ugh. I'm gooey dot h will not be found in a lib. Da boy. Include. Helps if I look for the right thing, doesn't it? It's not here. What the hell's going on? I mean, there it is. I need the GLFW stuff though. How do I get the GLFW stuff? <laughs> Implementation. Hmm. Have I missed something? That would be downloaded from GitHub. I've never tried doing this before. I've never used I'm GUI on uh, Linux properly. Do I actually need that GLFW thingy? I would have thought so because that's got the implementation file, but that implementation file, hold on a minute, is for Windows, is it? Ooh, good point. Let's just take them out a minute. Let's just not go there. <laughs> okay. It doesn't know where speed log is, maybe. And again, we've got these things going on within the speed log directory. That's usually easy to fix, you just do that. Not found. Hmm. Well, we've got speed log.
speedlog.h, I can find it. There's something wrong inside of the header file. Oh, common, common, common. What are you on? Yeah, I know there is. Because common in includes this file. Yeah. That's a circular dependency. Which isn't true, actually. It isn't. So there's no problem with you. You've got a huge problem with the circular dependency here. So I'll just bin you a second. And there's something wrong with the spdlog.h. as there's no speed log forward slash common. Oh. Really? There is So you're telling me there's something wrong here File Ah, oh, right a minute Speed log format bundled core dot h file not found. It's trying to find core dot h. No core here. A little bit annoying. So that doesn't exist. doesn't make sense. Why would common pick up on core? And why would the file not be there? This doesn't make sense. Are they not providing the files? AUR. That's the one I'm supposed to be using. Uh, 
Um, very fast header only compiled C++ logging library. Platforms Linux. Usage. Just stick in speedlog.h. <laughs> Not sure why it's doing this. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Is there anything I'm supposed to know in here? In here? <laughs> Benchmarks don't care. Whatever. Doesn't really say anything about the fact that these aren't picked up on Linux. Is there something I'm missing? Issues, 34. Can we add an issue? Hmm. I'm not sure about that. I'm sure about this, that that doesn't exist. What I would normally do with I'm GUI is integrate it actually within to the within the code itself. I'd do it differently. And I would take those files directly off the internet. Um this would not be the normal way that I do things. Alright. These all now have errors. Lovely. So, where are we up to? These are still errors, aren't they? I think we need this lot sorting out as well, don't we? So, hash define, blah, blah, blah. Hash define amber debug. We have not got windows.h. Okay. We seem to be okay there. Oh god. Alright. So all of the this is complaining about circular includes. So none of this should be here. Okay, sorted. That's a clean file. That's looking clean. Okay, we've done that. We've just gone through there. Note, multiple parse contexts are available for this file. Choose a preferred one from the edit toolbar. Okay. We've chosen it. There you go. Right, so clean that file up. Everything else should be okay now. 
What I am thinking though, should we have these first or these first? Good question. I'm going to leave it like that and see what happens. I can't do anything about what has been included by speed log. How am I supposed to fix their code? That doesn't make sense. So if that, is this a compiled? Whoa, 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 hold your horses, speed log. Are you compiled? Doesn't look like you are here. Although I could be looking for completely the wrong thing, as usual. This is supposed to be header only. Which is why I chose it. There's no library. So I don't know what it's going on about. And this is the error that it keeps coming up with. Why is it showing as an error here, but not here? Doesn't make sense. This is not my code, is it? No, it's not my code. What the hell's this got to do with me? Do I have to put a hash define in? Well... Older than 8. Right. This isn't right. I think this is something I'm going to need to think about. I wasn't expecting to have this many problems with libraries. There shouldn't be any problems with the libraries. You just download them and you use them. Right. Um, this isn't going to work. Ref does not name a type. And that's because it's not in here.
Where's he gone? Uh, where's my referencing system gone? Did I wipe it out by accident? Oh. Cobblers. That's interesting. I have a referencing system that I use within all of these things and it's suddenly disappeared. I didn't place it inside a compilation, did I? No. Those asserts. That's the auto binder. Uh, my referencing isn't here. No idea why. It should be in Amber Skies, maybe. Do I put Amber Skies in common or not? Oh, this is working now, is it? <laughs> What am I looking at here? Whose am I looking at? Has this been changed? Am I in the right place? I am in the right place. I thought I'd already done that. And taken that out. And that. Did I not save it? I thought you'd taken all this lot out. Right, these are things I can't include. Who's this going in from? Amber Skies. Alright, oh, yeah, that's fine then. Uh, that's fine. Why can't you... What? <laughs> What's wrong here? Event class type. An invalid processing token. Okay. So that... Hmm. Event class. Is this coming from Windows? I bet it is. I thought we had Windows.h on here. Uh, C 
plus plus std library windows uh, actually just not yeah just a list of the libraries I don't care where it comes from. Where's windows.h? Is it literally for windows only? Or is it for windowing? A Windows specific header file for the C and C++ programming languages. Ooh, sugar. It's the Win32 API. Okay. We are going to have fun with this. We are going to have big fun with this. I'm just trying to get rid of bits and pieces. We're going to have to come back and program that. Okay. It's not too bad so far. That's fine. Um, save all. I'm not overly fussy. Okay, so we've got errors. Great stuff. That's really nice. I don't think I can get past common and amber skies at this point in time, can I? Debug break was not declared in this scope. So that changes on Linux as well, does it? Hmm. interesting it was this thing was never put together with Linux in mind which is pretty strange for me uh, does it not give us the answer here or not I don't think it does does it no Alright, so I've played around with the code a little bit. We've decided that it's not going to work in a month of Sundays, as it's written incorrectly. Mind you, it's my code, I wrote it incorrectly, so there you go. Um, let's start with application, shall we?
so the event system's not going to work. Everything else seems to be okay, just the event system on this part. And this back end business that I'm GUI. Interesting. Not exactly what I was expecting. <clears throat> it would seem that the construction of the files, um, the libraries, is totally different in Windows to Linux. Not just the files themselves and what they contain, but I mean the actual structure of the library. And these are meant to be cross-platform. So something's not right. I'm wondering if it's the versions I'm accessing. Which is an interesting theory, I guess, but uh, it's not very helpful, is it? I don't think any of this is being very helpful to anybody. I may have to rethink this. This is not something I really, really want to do like this. What we would have to do is restart the project from scratch and rewrite it. Hmm. Because to follow it through uh, like a paper trail to alter this is going to be a little bit awkward. Because all I can really do is that. Can't take those out, and that one's fine. And this is in a CPP file. Oh God! I mean, I can just trash my way through them. A news parameter. Yeah, I know it is. <laughs> I can see that. Interesting. It's not correctly coded. So, yeah, good idea to highlight that one, I think. Right, this needs a rewrite. Yeah, a rewrite. Or should we say a recoding? Because 
because we are not going to be able to construct this as how I expected. Interesting. I don't know if it's object file. Mm, it'll be include, won't it? Right, okay, that's what we'll do then. We shall reconstruct this for Linux. In Windows, you won't have any problems. And if you do, you shouldn't, because I have, have run this in Windows, so I know it compiles. Or should I say, I can compile it in Windows for you straight away. Because there is a solution there, and you can download um, Visual Studio and do it from the Avengers version. That will just compile and run. Okay. So we now need to get um, a version of Foundation Lib up and running. That will be our first task. That's going to be interesting. I've never tried doing it this way before. I've, I don't normally program on Windows and then go to Linux to continue a program. I'll program on Linux and go to Windows to continue a program because I don't like programming on Windows usually. But this was also a bit of an experiment in um, Microsoft Visual MSVC, Microsoft Visual Code or Visual Community Edition, whatever you want to call it. Visual Studio. I don't like how the Windows part of this reacts um, to Linux, so... If you want to know how to do this, it's quite simple. It's just a reconstruction of code. The code doesn't usually need to be fully rewritten. That's the first thing. You usually find out that the code's perfectly fine. But again, this is only past one code, it's garbage, so it won't be fine. If this was gold standard, we wouldn't be having a problem right now. It would just compile. So, what do you do? Well, you do this. Um, do I want to save anything out on here? Not particularly. Alright. What changes have we now made? You'll see me do this quite a lot. I'll go through something and then I'll get to this point. <laughs> And I'll think to myself, what I've just done is awful. Can we discard? You are in a detached head state. Woo. <laughs> 652 file changes on head. Discard all changes, no. Can't 
can I not just revert? Undo. Hmm. Um, pull. Okay. Can I just get rid of you? Where are you coming in from? it just discard all changes what I don't understand why is there an unstaged file 652 oh because that's not in git ignore that's better That's it. Well, I didn't know that. Mind you, we haven't tried, have we? Right, so we just clean the code. Uh, yes. This no longer exists. And we better clean to make sure. Good. Good. Yep, so gone. Right. So making a profile like that is not a good idea. That's the first thing. So that was an automated profile um, using Windows-based code. Why did I do it in Windows-based code? I don't normally do that. I know why I did it. I think I did it to make this problem. Hmm. Because this is a problem. This is a problem that I commonly encounter on GitHub. And I wanted to know why it was being made. And it's made be usually because people are using things like um, Visual Studio. Which is what I used to make this code. And it's presented a lot of solutions. Um, which I really wasn't aware of. So what I would like to do is to be inside of oh right that build directory. Can you please go away? Just get out of the way. You're not supposed to be here. Oh yeah, it has been licensed by the way. This this is the um, Apache license version two, January two thousand and four. Basically, do what the hell you like with my code. I claim zero intellectual superiority. <laughs> I don't care. Right, foundation.lib. Um, what I'm going to do then...
is create a new file and I'm going to call it That's fair enough. And then I want to split screen. And here on the right hand side, I would like to open a file, please. What? Pardon? What, where? Ah, here, maybe? Okay. Didn't do what I expected it to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do that. Just copy them straight across. don't need that. Call that at this stage. Um, Copy you in here. I'll have Put you in because I can. I think that's the only one that's correct. In Windows, that's Open GL32, if I remember rightly. It's not called GL. Although I think this shortcut can still be used if you're using Qt, but don't quote me on that. All right, we're happy there, there, and there. Um, and that should do it for now. Yeah. I can now open that project directly. From here. We can configure the project. And there it is. And we can finish this off. That's all there is. Can I think of anything else to put in there at this point in time? 
as we are going to discover. This is going to be fun. What we're going to be doing then, by the looks of it, over the next couple of days, is constructing this from scratch by adding file by file and writing a program. So we will need a program to, to write. That's the next thing. We've got a sandbox and we've got a reference sandbox. Um, we do have everything I want here. Right. Um, what we'll do then is we will create a sandbox project as well. That should be easier to do. <laughs> and it's just a CPP, isn't it? All right, we'll do it from here then. Um, It's QMake project minus R dot. There we go. Done. You're done. There it is. Uh, welcome. Let's go into um, OpenGL mode. So clone to OpenGL. We will go into OpenGL, which gives us foundation one. Go to the welcome screen and open the other project, which is that one. Configure the project. We have our sandbox. OK, it's an app. Sandbox include path, yeah. Sources. Sandbox. Sandbox is this. We do not have anything currently in foundation. <laughs> so the first thing we have to do is to compile something within foundation. Uh, so, amberskies.h, that doesn't matter for a second. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yep, that's fine. We are looking for getting rid of that, for starters. So, let's get rid of that, for starters. That's not what we want. And the rest is immaterial. Right, let's have a look at this top part. <laughs> Simple server programming in C++. That's not what we're doing. OpenGL Foundation. In C++, contact email, yeah, okay, the GitHub's wrong. Right, let's get the GitHub then. Let's get this started out properly. Start setting up as a development environment properly. That might help. And there's your code. So that goes in here. Page 
paste. Yep, yeah, that's come up nicely. Um, I'm not use, going to use this. I'm going to use a proper email, which is going to be Fraser dot sharp at uh, virgin media dot com so you can contact me twitch is correct youtube is correct all of this is now currently incorrect and can just be control forward slashed done the file is clean Um, Pro is clean. We don't need this garbage because we're not using QT. <coughs> um, headers, finish this up properly, plus equals. Anything else we might need? Mm, not at this point in time. Okay. There's our project, uh, target sandbox. We haven't got a target. Yes, we have. Good. Well done, game. There's no main. Okay, so that's the first thing that we have to do is undefined reference to main. We don't have a main function. We need one of those for a C++ file or it doesn't know what to do. To get that, we would need to put main in here. So under foundation, we are going to add existing files under source amber skies core we are going to include you thank you this requires us to have an extern amber application We can get rid of you because we're no longer interested in Windows. Good, that worked. We do need an extern amber application, so we're going to have to put those in. Add existing files, source amber skies core. There we go, we'll just pop you in. Looking good. So we need to go now to Ampli application. We don't have a common, so we can get rid of you. We don't have any of this. So bye. Uh, we have no I'm GUI at this point in time. Okay, we don't have you two. Mm, bye. Uh, we don't have 67 onwards either. Okay, nice to have met you. We have no window. That's going to be our first objective, probably. We have no window. Go away. Create application. That's the thing that we need for this to work. 
Why are you still here? Unclaimed a breakpoint. Goodbye. This file is now clean. Go back to sandbox. Uh, change the date to whatever the date is. It's 04. 04, 04, 2022. Okay. That's looking good. We just have to do that. We need to copy it and place it into here. Yep. Yeah. Done, done. Well, let's head over to sources. We can do the same here. Uh, we can't include any of that as we don't have it for compilation. So bye bye. Amber assert doesn't exist. Window doesn't exist. None of that exists. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Be careful. Uh, instance does exist. <laughs> Be very careful at this point in time. Uh, if def debug will continue to work, we're not setting it. Hmm. Okay. We can't use those two lines. If window is visible. M window why aren't you what? Oh we do have the variable. Okay. Okay, we can take you out. It's looking better. We don't have you. Um, we don't have an on-event system. So all of this is useless to me. Literally all of it. Right, so what don't we have here? So on event, push layer, and push overlay. So from U, push layer, push overlay, can go. Close application is fine. Then we get to the resizing of the window, which we're not doing just yet. Window resize, window close, and that's it. Fantastic. Wow, we did it. We've got an application class. We now need to create two more files. One is common, uh, which I'm not sure I really want now. But we should have them. Really. And amber skies. So let's see if we can add those to the library. So 
So it's that one and that one. Pop you in. There we go, it'll be headers only. So let's go to common. And common's the first one. Um, so, the first thing we have to do is take out that line. And that line, otherwise we create an error. Will our asserts work? Not sure at this point. So this just switches on and off asserts. Um, I'm just going to take you out. Just for now. I will look at the macros. Well, we will look at the macro, should I say. Define a bit to be that, that's fine. This down here is all useless to us, so we can't have those includes. We can have all of those includes. We can't have any of these includes. All right, so that's common sorted out, and it's got me type defs, good. So we can use a me type defs. If you're wondering what this means, it means I don't have to type in this garbage. I can just go U8, U32, I8, I32, I64 for those types, so integers. And that tells me that it's 8-bit, eight, 32-bit, eight or 64-bit. <coughs> I can control the size of my variables very easy. Right, common now exists. Amber skies dot h. No, we'll come back to you in a second. Main entry point doesn't use this. I shouldn't use this. Good. Application dot h now can include that. Not found. Because it's in source. So, profile. We have our first include path. This is how I construct it properly, because we're going to have to recode this to be generic. It's all in Windows code. We need generic. The only reason I put this minus LGL here is to check that it damn well works. I save that. That should run a checker. Whatever. Hmm. Is there a problem here? Okay. Let's try uh, PWD. There's nothing happening. Okay. Lexical or preprocessor issue in common dot H. Lexical or preprocessor. 
cock up. That's easy enough to start working out. Let's start doing cleaning. Clean, 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 clean up. Clean up all of this garbage. Clean. Nothing, 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 nothing. String, unordered map, unordered set, utility, in fact, all of those exist. Type deaths are safe. You cannot complain about common.h at all. Thank you. Now, did that mean it couldn't find it before, or was I just being stupid? I need to know. Oh, dollar dollar PWD just means um, program working directory. Oh, sorry, project working directory. Uh, that goes from wherever this profile is. Uh, this profile, sorry. So it takes the directory of where the profile is and makes this the working directory. So you can go to source. I just want to know if dot source will work properly or not. It's a personal thing. It will. Wow. Minus LG, we've got the LP, oh, phew, we've got uh, threading. Um, looking good. Uh, we are building the wrong thing. Okay, we're looking bad. Let's try building the right thing. There you go, it worked. This now means that we can say, hey, sandbox, let's add a library. It's external. And hey, guess what? We're in Linux. Hmm. Library file. We've just made it. It's in OpenGL Foundation code. It's here. It's there. There it is. What about the include path? The include path will be in the foundation lib and it will be in source. Correct, correct. Fantastic. Open foundation source. It's for Linux only. doesn't matter about everything there because Linux doesn't care about all of this garbage that Windows and Mac put in. It will add the following. We will allow it to. And blow me down, what do we have in sandbox here? We now have an include path. So I'll put that with the include paths. We now have a libs plus minus L foundation. Oh, it's a small L. Ooh, quick, alter this. Uh, <laughs> 
do a rebuild quick. See if that works. And just find out. That seemed to. Uh, a capital L means. Oh, wait a minute. That's a small L, isn't it? To a capital L. They'd mean different things. Yeah, capital L, you give the path. The small L is the file that you want. Gotcha. Capital L is your library path. Small L is the library you wish to have. Good. We've worked that up bit out. Our dependencies path. Will be the library dependency. Mm. So if we put that first. We don't need to put that big L in do we? That's a little bit weird. Oh, that's uh, depend path is the relative path to your own project. Okay. Well, we don't need that down here, do we? Let's put that in a sensible place. So I've known what that is. The include path it's also placed in as um, the same as the depend path, which I'm a bit worried about. I don't think it should do that, even though... Hello, Poppy. Come on, then. You're all right. It's OK. It's just a keyboard that's floating around in front of me because it's on a big extension arm, it says. Uh, right, what are we left with? We're left with two commands now. One is pre-target dependencies and the other one is, why is it giving us all of this garbage? Because all of that does is check that things actually exist. It's in Unix only, so we don't need this. So it's in Linux only, so it doesn't need this. Um, yeah, because Mac OS is also Unix. Okay, got you. And that's why you're doing it that way. Fine. Uh, cut. I'll put all my libraries here, please. I'm going to keep it the same way they've done it. I didn't write it. I don't change it. And as for you, we'll cut you and we will just put you with the dependencies, I think. Um, we should now be able to run that successfully. And this is Sandbox Pro. Good. We've still got the error. Let's get rid of that error now. Hello, Sandbox Pro. Right, we don't have the right code here. Let's go find the right code. The right code is hidden where? It will be under reference material. I think it will be in sandbox one, maybe. Yeah, possibly. Let's try Sand Rogue. That's what I want. That. Thank 
Tokyo. The piece of code that I want to use is this. Uh, main entry point. We need to include Did we do the wrong one? Okay. Let's start with this line then. Do we have amber skies? We do. Uh, do we have core? We do. Do we have... Main entry point? We do. Right. There's something wrong in with that include. Really? There won't be. Eventually. Amber. Application. Amber. Create application. Right, let's sort this out first, otherwise it's definitely not going to work. Uh, we do need now to include Amber Skies. So we'll do that. I didn't go through there, did I? I only did common. Lovely. Works out well for us anyway. Fourth April, copy you over. You've been corrected. Corrections have been implemented. Code minimized. Good. Main entry point doesn't work. Why? That bit's correct. Main entry point. We can't do that. We can't do a printf. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I know. Silly, isn't it? Amber create application does exist, it's here. Extern, blah blah, what's wrong with this? Include Amber Sky's core application H for symbol Amber. Ah. But no, that's not correct. It is correct, but it's not correct. This is interesting. Because this is a copy and paste. It's a header file. It doesn't need to include. Just save that out a second. This is very interesting. That code is correct. This is a copy and paste. Main entry point dot h is a header file. It does not get compiled. Sandbox is saying What's wrong with it now? Thank you. Just save it and it'll sort itself out, right. Return a new sand rogue. So we need a new sand rogue. Uh, what should we call it this? 
Um, I'll call it whatever. Sandro will do. I don't care. I don't care what it's called. Right, that was a different way of doing things. Do I need that? I need to check that those lines. <coughs> That's create application. That's create application. I'm happy with this one. Right. You have to put the include here, by the way. You can't put it at the top. Because if you try and put it at the top, it will interfere with all of this. Return new sand rogue function. Well, I've got sandbox. So let's use sandbox. Okay. So that brings you into existence. Click. We cannot push a layer. We don't have any. So it will construct a sandbox and it will give it a default destructor. That's all it's going to do. It's not going to run anything at this point. So we would need some kind of output. Amber Skies gives us nothing. Hmm. Guess we use IO stream, don't we? Because I don't know if this will continue to run or not. <clears throat> Hash include uh, IO stream. Will do. Yeah, thanks. What we'll place in here is uh, STD. Out Did I do that right? C out Yeah Um uh, Welcome To the sandbox Actually no, I'll do it properly I will do it as sandbox uh, constructed. Um, yep, yeah, I'll do that. And then that will be std colon colon end line. Done. Perfect piece of C code. C++ code, sorry. Okay, that's clean. We've got a sandbox. It's going to tell us that it's been constructed. There's no errors. I hope. Foundation. Rebuild. A sandbox. Run. Sandbox constructed. We didn't tell Sandbox that it was a console, did we? Interesting. It's telling us that in int main, of all places, 
because I told you it was a copy and paste thing. The main is now being copied and pasted into line 98. So all of the errors that it was coming up with and saying, oh, you can't do this. Well, it's irrelevant because it's being pasted here. That's why I was wondering, why the hell is it giving me errors? It's giving me the warnings on the arguments not being used. Whoopie doos. We can do something about that. But I'm not going to. What will we use those arguments for? There you go. That is your entry point and how it works. You copy and paste using the compiler main, int main, the main entry point uh, for the user on their behalf so they don't have to worry about creating a main entry point. Uh, they just have to write this one simple piece of code which they can copy and paste in. It has to go at the end of their main file and above it you just put in the class or the program that you are about to make. Construct, program, whatever. Call it whatever you want really. But this now is C++ land. Because in C++ land we have a class. This is an object within C++. It has a lifetime. Did it continue to run? Didn't look. Oh, it says it crashed. Oh, sorry. It's looping. It's in a loop. That's an application with a run loop. If you look at the application output here, it's just started and it's quite happily running an application. The application is nothing special, we've just emptied it out. And we can go and have a look at it. We now have our OpenGL foundation code running in Linux. The only way to stop it, unfortunately, is by crashing the program. Um, can we do it from Control C or V? Yeah, Control C, close the window. We just crash it out. We have no exit clause written into our program at this point. Our program is working perfectly. Right, we can now set that as the active file. It works. The foundation can be now implemented properly this time, hopefully. And because it's easy to convert from Linux to Windows than it is from Windows to Linux, because on Windows, all you have to do is add Windows.h and everything works. Whereas in Linux, um, you've got to get rid of all of that Windows.h because it really does mess things up. So we've now got our static library and our sandbox working nicely. And I think that's not too complicated. I don't agree with having these lines in. And I don't think we need a libs plus. Yes, we do with that one. We do need the capital L with that one because it's not in the system path. Otherwise, that's how you make your entry point and we'll just look at these properly now. So our application, we've taken everything out. We're not defining that. Mm. We've taken everything out. We've got running equals true. Window is visible. Doesn't matter. It's just a variable. We're ignoring it. It's probably not being used properly. We are using a singleton. You can only have one application running. 
You can have many, 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 many layers. And each layer could be a separate application for all I care. But you can only have one main control unit, one application to stem all your layers off. I'll show you how that works in a sec. How long have I got? I haven't got any left. Ah, damn, run out of time. So a quick overview. Last frame time. We're not using any of this yet. Uh, there's our run. <clears throat> our close application isn't working yet because we don't have the interrupt system going. How is our run happening? Who's running us? So we set up our singleton, our instance. So our instance equals a null pointer. We set it up. We haven't got the if not null return thing. Have we got that in here? Create application. No, we're just returning an instance, so it's not a true singleton. Or is it? Mm. No, it's not really a true singleton, that. Okay. It's half of one. It's got a bit missing. <laughs> Application. Run while I'm running. Who's running me? Who's running me? It's the main entry points doing it, isn't it? Yeah. So even this says it's full of errors, it's not. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? Because it's a copy and paste by a compiler. So you can't have this file ever tell you that it's correct. Which is rather interesting, because I can type in something like uh, std cout. And it would be uh, argv. Yeah, argv open arg c minus one. And then we could put in std, colon, colon, end line. And it's going to complain its backside off that I can't do that. But I can. I just did. <clears throat> Is that correct? It's going to come in with one argument. And we want zero. Okay, let's run it. Find out. It's a header file I've just altered. Doesn't really matter. We could still run our sandbox. Sandbox constructed. Ooh. We didn't recompile. Okay, let's try it again. There you go. So that argument, that value that it's taking off the command line when main is run. Uh, is this here mount projects twitch open gel foundation code build sandbox desktop 4 bit sorry 64 bit debug forward slash sandbox that is the command to run the program called sandbox and that's exactly what we did here there you go mount projects twitch open blah 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 that's where that comes from. So all we've done is we've done that. These red markers mean nothing in this file. And it is no longer Windows. Cool. We no longer have Windows code here. Okay, 
let's get rid of you. Uh, yep, yeah, let's get rid of you. Good. All works. That's how you start this project, unfortunately, if you are on Linux. I want to complete this now. I'm interested. So, thank you to the person that's asked me to look at this. The Windows one's a lot easier to do. You could just go over to um, the Avengers one and download that and just throw it into... Uh, Visual Studio. But I wouldn't do that if you want to learn. This is important. This is how you make an entry point. You make an entry point which is a complete error. It's against all of the rules of C++. What have we got? Sorry, I don't... I got mashed up in my mind again. Let's just have a look at this. We've got some chat. Sorry. Hello. Learning to use OpenGL and I'm facing a problem that I can't solve. Can I ask you? Yes, you can ask me. Of course you can. If I can read it. Can I... I can't read it. Can I ask you for some advice? Certainly. I wrote a program in OpenGL 3.3. Good one to choose. 3.3 is probably the best learning area. And I need to insert it in in a platform that uses OpenGL 1.1. You can't. I've searched a lot online, but I can't use the shaders in OpenGL 1.1. No, there, you can't. There aren't any. OpenGL uh, 1.1 was designed for direct um, only, not for shaders. I don't even think you can load a shader in 1.1, can you? There might You might be able to, but it's been a hell of a long time since I used it. How can I solve this? You can't. Is it possible to open uh, one, open one, open, sorry, I'll read that again. Is it possible to open an OpenGL 1.1 window with Windows 32? And inside it, open two other windows with OpenGL 3.3. No. Uh, there you go. What you are doing is you are asking the impossible. OpenGL is a state machine. The state of your graphics card at any one point in time will influence whatever you command your graphics card to do. The version of OpenGL is which switches on your graphics card you can switch on or off. That's what the version number of OpenGL means. You cannot mix OpenGL versions because they have different switches. So the answer to all of the things that you've just said is no. It's a state machine. You have to keep the state. You cannot swap between the two without first unloading the whole state of your graphics card, probably saving it onto disk, then loading a new state from a different version of OpenGL, probably either from a function or from... Um, an image on disk and then operating in say version 3.3 and then you would then have to remove that all from your graphics card and reset your graphics card before then putting OpenGL 1.1 back on it and then you have to you'd have to keep swapping it like that that would be the only conceivable way that you that I could program safely using two OpenGL versions. This is not an intended use of OpenGL. OpenGL 3.3 is the worst one to use if you want OpenGL 1.1. 1. 1. 
go back to OpenGL 3.0 or 3.2 and I think you'll get backwards compatibility and you may be able to use some of the commands from OpenGL 1.1 within version 3.3 the only way you can do it is by using backwards compatibility and I think in 3.3 they scrapped it there's no longer any direct input so I think you might have to step one back to 3.2 if you want to do it without what I just described as resetting your graphics card all the time obviously the efficiency of doing that would be horrendously bad but an interesting question notice I didn't say why the hell would you like to do that the answer to that question is none of my business right let's have a look anything else I need to so the answer to your question is basically no don't do it Interesting though. Oh, something I knew the answer to for once. Uh, let's find this because we're wrapping up now. So yes, we can now program outside of C++ in an illegal fashion as an int main and start a program running. That's a very interesting way of making an entry point into a standard, well, a standardized or core library. This technique is not just useful, but it's also a learning curve which you don't get to when learning to program initially because you don't realize that header files are not compiled or run. Header files are instructions to the compiler of what it is expecting to find. And they get cut and paste to those hash include points, which is why we have hash include. It's to tell the compiler to cut and paste the .h files uh, to wherever that hash include is. It's also the reason why we have uh, the pragma wants at the top of these. Did I put it on this one? I blooming hope it did. Yeah. It's why we've got this at the top. This also tells the compiler that you can only cut and paste this once. You can never do it again once it has been placed. The compiler will decide where to place it. And it will place it in the position um, where it is going to be used, obviously. And there's rules to that, but then we're going off into a speech, aren't we? I did start late today. We're only on 3.54. So hopefully I've introduced you to a whole different ball game for typing int main today. I've also looked through the whole of this and worked out exactly how we're going to go forwards with it. We've decided upon the system, which is going to be event driven. We've decided to use um, OpenGL and layers, which I said I was going to describe in more detail and haven't really got around to. But I think you're already coming to understand how big of a difference in programming it's going to make to you when you want to make a game. That you can put all of the artificial intelligence on a layer. You can place all of your game logic on a different layer. You can compartmentalize everything into a little jiggly black box of code and save it out as a little jiggly black box of code. Each layer can be as simple 
or as complicated as you wish. Hmm. I think well, that covers the introduction to this. I think we went down the rabbit hole by trying to make this into a full program and then changing it into Linux. I think doing it this way is probably more sensible as we can grow it more ergonomically as we are now in the application we can start now expanding upon our application and exploring the code as we go converting it into Linux and understanding what we're doing obviously all we need to do is take away the slashes because why retype everything oh what happened there something fell on the floor oh dear a lot will change in these files as we go because this is a pass one file and it's garbage so this code base is going to probably change for the better I hope we'll see if we can do that because it is an awful code base it really is awful but we have a program that's running and it's running without int main. Is that a gimmick? No, it's not. It's more practical than you think. Because it protects the user of your library from themselves. And it protects your library from the user misusing your library. At this point in your library, all access to your library is through functions that you are giving to your user so that they can't misuse them. I don't think we protected application too well there and that there should be a check that the instance already exists. What I'm talking about here is this, this is equal to this. Right, it's done outside of the application, I get you. That should be static. God I'm wishing Yeah, it is, it's static. Who's creating it? Where's the new? Where's the new? Where did we put new? This is the beauty of... Uh, ah. Did I just comment it out? It's there. And we can't use it yet because we don't have the assert function. Functionality. Oh, by the way, Amber, the name of this is just the namespace. It's nothing more. If you change the namespace to whatever you want to call your version of this, if you want to rewrite it to your version, um, just change the name. But you'd have you have to do it for everything, obviously, in every file. There'll be a namespace somewhere here. So just go through every single file, changing the namespaces, and you can call it anything you want. Uh, that's not a problem. I've called it Amber Skies and I've got namespace Amber. It's a standard that I use. Very easy standard, very easy word to type for me. So we do have an assert to stop the instance being repeatedly 
Yeah, that's we need that amber assert up. So I suppose that's going to be the first line that we actually write. Ooh. And it's not even C++. Well, okay there. Checking the tops. We're okay there. Checking the tops. Okay. Okay. I'm happy with the headers. I'm happy with the source file. <laughs> we had to have one source file. You have to have that source file. That's the only thing that's being compiled. Without that one CP CPP file, we don't have a library. And that's why I had to get this application up and running. On sandbox side. I'm good. I'm happy. Um, tools. Git. Local repository. Master. Ooh. No. Never mind. Commit. Initial setup. Um, removed all files from no. Recreating project one file at a time to remove its dependency on Windows uh, OS. Oh god, I just realized how close to the microphone this keyboard is. I apologize now. I've just realized. I'll sort that out for next time. We will commit that. This is now non-Windows specific. It is not Linux specific either. We are going to make this non-operating system specific. Because this code is crap as it stands. Right, let's give you the code. You can now load this up through the dot profiles uh, into Qt Creator. Uh, push. Push, man, push. Why have I got a whip? Who's you? Oh, right, you lot. Um, no. Ignore all files. Uh, ignore all files. There we go. Um, summary dot ignore dot ignore construct. Dot ignore includes the build directories. Um, description. files not needed. There we go. There we go. And push. We're up to date. And we have a dot ignore file. Yay, go me. 
blink. 19 seconds ago, view the code. You now have dot profiles, which you can use with Qt Creator. The only thing that I might change on here is that we can now go to the readme file and probably state something different. Mm. Please no, blah, 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 blah. Dependencies used, no, let's not do that part. Let's go here. Recon structuring um, the static library. Uh, using Qt uh, Creator dot profiles have been generated. Full yeah. Full stop. Um, there's a comma there. Where's that comma? Get rid of that. Lovely. Control S. Done. Uh, don't really need you open anymore. Just tidying up, that's all, really. Okay, that's closed. Good. Don't need you open anymore. Should have kept you open and it didn't. Because <clears throat> you can do it for all from in here. A summary. Um, read me. Description, non stage all changes, roll mouse. Okay, uh, commit changes done. Update. And I can't see it. Update. What's going on? Something's not right. I bet it's my bloody cookies. <laughs> Is it because I put a spaces in there? Seems to be a matter how many spaces I put in. Well, I don't like this kind of stuff. 
All right, let's try doing that. Switch you off. Oh, yes, I know it's your food time, but I want to do this. I'm really into it. I know, Poppy. Read me. Update. Um, describes current develop. Try pushing that. Push successfully, master to the origin. Yeah, okay, now we can start a branch. We are now at the stage where we can develop. I hope. There it is, current development. Not bad from a dive in at the deep end, was it? We've now got, on our first day... Okay, so I did prepare a little bit for this. And it wasn't just a di dive in at the deep end. And yeah, I had most of this already written. But for a dive in at the deep end, this is day one development. I've got the whole code from the past that I've written. I've jammed everything that I can think of together into something called a foundation lib. I've got a sandbox to play around with and we have it up and working with an application entry point. Not bad for a day. What can we do in a week? We could probably finish it in a week. Um, that'd be interesting. So unless anybody wants to see me do anything else, that's how I am going to start this kind of project. I've got all of this code. It's all Windows based. I'm going to reconstruct it so that it's not Windows based. That's the, But that's my first objective. Having Windows code is useless. It's just garbage. So I've got it, folks. You've got it. There's your code. You now, anybody could now follow on from this one stream. And if they knew an average amount of C++ could finish that project and would learn an awful lot in doing so if they did it by themselves and researched it all as they went along and followed the chain of includes through the whole thing and all of the the ways how it all integrates together what goes with what I think we should show you a way of cheating and how to analyze the code but I don't think that you would learn as much that way, so no, no, we won't do that. I cheat. I do nowadays, anyway. But I'm not going to on this one. I don't think that's fair. Because I said I'm going to do it for this person um, on YouTube who's asked me to do it, so I'm going to do it. But now they've got a starting point. That person on YouTube can now watch this, and they will have a starting point for their project. I didn't check if it was the same person that just asked me a question in chat either. No, it wasn't. Okay, that's fine. If it had have been, I should have chatted with them, shouldn't I? I'm going to need to defocus myself a little bit from the project and watch chat a little bit more. It would seem we are getting more interaction in the last seven days 
and interaction interferes with my focus which is fine I don't mind it will slow me down a little bit more than I already am and I'm already bloody slow I know that but I'm more interested in what people have to say I'm not really interested in what I've got to say I know what I've got to say I'm interested in what you've got to say Mixing OpenGL 1.1 with th OpenGL 3.3 Is there a practical reason for doing that? You see, somebody's put a question in chat and it's made me think It's not a question I've ever asked myself Thank you um, and that is a big shout out to the person who put, posed that question uh, Casa del Vento Thank you very much for the question That is awesome You've just made me think about something Which I've never thought about before And that will mean I will go away now Find some food for my cat Find some food for me And go and research the answer to the question that has now been posed because I don't have an answer to it right take care peeps how do I get out of this I've forgotten <laughs> oh that's right we do that I remember now and now I don't get the com keyboards confused isn't that ace so this is what we have we have our sandbox the game and we have an entry point and an application so we have that box that box and that box now complete we can now tick those I suppose and this keyboard's in the way can we get rid of this keyboard now Ooh, it just swivels out of the way yeah I'm loving this so we now have that we now have that and we now have that uh, our next part will obviously be introducing the layers so we can expand our game and then we will have to get the window up and running won't we uh, that'll be interesting because the window system is GLFW that's quite hmm. it's not as simple as SDL And I'm going to have to do it without windows.h Okay, I think I can do that I have no idea if I can do it or not, but I think I can We might have to sit down and devise a way of doing it A system for doing it But hell It'll be fun I've got mice, I've got three mice now lined up Because there's three computers in operation here, this is so weird Okay Let's drop this. It's too much fun. I'm having too much fun with this. There we go. So we've been live now for four hours and 20 minutes. Um, it's been a good session. It's brought questions up which I haven't thought about. It's made me dive in at the deep end on a huge mass of code. Well, not a huge mass, a small mass of code, and which unfortunately I've written, so I understand it. It's not going to be difficult for me to understand how to modify this, but whether we can or not, I don't know yet. It's an interesting experiment for me. In the meantime, I'd like you to take care, and above all, have fun. <laughs>